Hi and welcome to the Homeopathy Health Show. I'm Atik Ahmad Bharti, a fourth generation homeopath with over 25 years of professional experience and practice in this field of healing. The Homeopathy Health Show is the online voice of homeopathy around the world, promoting and raising awareness of this truly unique system of healing, which is suitable for all ages, young and old. Every week I invite guests from the world of homeopathy to come and share their experiences, their work, offer insights and essentially talk all things homeopathy. Why not visit www.liketreatslike.co.uk and click on the radio and podcast button to listen to the latest episodes. So let's begin today's show here on UK Health Radio, the world's number one talk health radio. Hi and welcome to another episode of the Homeopathy Health Show here on UK Health Radio. I do hope you're well and of course I hope and pray your loved ones have been the same. I have something very inspiring for you today. It's really going to be very, uh, it's going to give this opportunity to reflect on a great many things. I've got a great honour today to welcome Wes Finday to the Homeopathy Health Show. Wes is a member of the Sweetgrass First Nation of the Indigenous People of Canada, and he's also a medicine man and very, very knowledgeable. So this is going to be, it may be an unusual show because I'm actually not going to be talking much. I want to give the platform very much to my respected friend, Wes Finday, and let him talk and let him inspire us. So with that, I will welcome my guest, Wes Finday. Um, Wes, it's an absolute honour and a real privilege that you've um, most humbly accepted the invitation to come on the show. I'm very grateful to you. Thank you so very much, and welcome with open arms. Well, thank you. It was good to hear from you. And, uh, you know, it was interesting when I heard your name, Atik. It... it uh, rang something for me from the distant past, from our our creation stories, where we have uh, that word being used, atik, and it's used uh, to name a caribou. That was how caribou were named before the earth became solid. So you could say in the dimension of the spirit, these animals had names already. And in the transition, you mentioned that uh, autumn is a time of uh, evolution and transition. And for us in the sacred circle of our lives, it is an evolution and a transition into the state of becoming, we could say, whole and that you become a whole human being in your in your journey through the dimensions of uh, the physical world the emotional world the spiritual world and then the understanding that is derived from that journey which gives either a vision awaken will awaken a vision in your memory or maybe help you to understand who you think you are and what you think you are doing here and we this is important this is critical at this point in human history because so many of our young people have lost their connection to the knowledge of the sacred and a lot of that can be attributed to the fact that uh, they were disconnected from their tales of power, their sacred stories, which talk about uh, possibilities, you know, that would be considered magical in this realm because we have laws that govern our state of being in the present physical reality. Those laws may or may not apply, or they will be different in other dimensions. 
for instance, in another dimension where I have gone to the boundaries, I have been taken to the boundaries and I have looked into the distance in the sand hills, I will say. And what I saw, there were buildings which were constructed like uh, igloos. They had rounded tops, but there was beings there. And they were in a great sandy place. And they just, you know, all of these words, all of these stories begin to connect. And for us, for instance, Yegawachi, the sand hills for some, is a place that your soul travels to after it has completed its physical journey through this world and uh, garnered what it what it has been able to from this physical experience and so it's critical for our people to understand when we say who am i that i should understand i am a child of creator I am a child of an energy so vast and that flows through every part of creation. I am a part of this creation. It is forever. It will always be. It has always been. And that is the way of things in that dimension. That dimension of the spirit is nurtured and fed by the world and reality of emotions. Now you can feed it emotions which will nurture it and allow it to grow and strengthen it and give it the ability to become a visionary, not just, you know, a something who can only see a limited distance, but what what uh, the, your physical limitations are, then your imagination and your soul and your spirit take over and lead you in farther directions than your body and your mind ever could. And some, for some, that is a terrifying journey. It is uh, something to be avoided and to be dreaded because in those dimensions, we are not in control. Much like this dimension, we are not in control here either, but at least we have built up the, the facade that we are in control. And we derive some comfort and some energy from those fairy tales thinking that uh, we have everything under control and we, we will go in directions we please, not understanding that there is a process in place which is much greater, much farther comes from beyond the living memory of any physical entity and can only be accessed from the spiritual memories where, whereby we are taught those stories of the things that happened in the beginning of time. We say time, but we actually, it is in the beginning of all things, our, our stories say, when there was a great explosion in the heavens. And that lasted far longer than a human mind can imagine. But during those explosions, that is where the spirits arose from, were awakened, and they arose. And for us, there is the first one that uh, comes to mind because it is the first one that appears in our stories, and it is Kiwe Tin, the wind. And the wind began to blow in the beginning of all things, and it continues to blow today, and it will be forever continuing to blow. And as it travels in its journeys throughout different levels of creation, it will bring different passengers, different entities that will travel with it. And for instance, there is one who was traveling through the sky and looked down and saw humans and and said, 
I am called sickness. I am the spirit of sickness. I am not evil. I do not come to indiscriminately cause harm, but periodically I am summoned and I am bid to go about all over the earth to make a journey and examine the state of things and if necessary rebalance the things that have gone out of balance. And at that times when the, when you sense the essence of sickness traveling the globe, at that time, move back from the waterways. Do not be too close to the rivers or the lakes because uh, it is easy for that sickness to be traveling through there and for a great many people to become sick. And, you know, we have these messages from these spirits that speak to us as they travel, but we don't hear. We have forgotten how to listen. We listen with our ears that are co connected to our bodies. And when our bodies hear something, it has to be taken into the mind and translated. And in the translations of the mind, then uh, there are awakened emotions. Emotions that we are caused to feel because of what we have heard. And, uh, you know, why, what we think about it. And it's important to examine why do you feel the way you do when you hear something? Why are some things triggers for you? And how do you, are these normal, are these natural? And the spirits say you are given a mind and it is your duty to exercise your mind. Exercise it, use your imagination, use your memories, use your dreams, use your visions until you get to the point where you have such developed a mastery of your mind to the point where it would be incredibly difficult to startle you because it's at those moments of being startled and surprised that we can become traumatized and the connection of our souls to our bodies becomes a little tenuous. And if our souls are taken from our bodies, it's important to try and regain that space of who you are by returning your soul into your body. Otherwise, you know, there are always entities that uh, are looking for places to inhabit. What do you say and was that's a state of peace? That's a state of being at peace. I would say that is the journey towards... Uh, when you arrive at that journey, it is a state, a sense of contentment, so that uh, it, you, it would be hard for you to be triggered unless it was incredibly out of your experience. And just let me say, for instance, in a story that we have about one of our great chiefs, he went and he fasted in a cave. And inside that cave, well, he, during a fast in the mountains, he was taken into a cave. And in the center of that cave was a round stone, about three feet high. And uh, he was uh, put on that rock in the middle of the, in the middle of the cavern in the mountains to sit and watch. And as he watched, forces began coming into that area and surrounding that space that he was sitting in. And uh, he knew that uh, something was going on. And uh, part of the message was that these forces in the future could all be his if he could withstand the coming challenge. 
And as he sat there thinking about this, uh, he heard a noise at the entrance to the mountain and looked over there and he saw a great black stallion standing at the doorway. It was rearing on its hind legs and and uh, there was fire flying out of its eyes. And he immediately focused on it. And the moment he was focused on it, it dropped down and it began to gallop towards him. And he tried to calm himself, discipline himself. But at the last moment, when he knew it was going to run over him, he stuck up his arm in fear to protect himself. And he was told after that if he had managed to maintain his composure, that all of those horses he had seen milling about him in the cavern would have been, would have belonged to him at some point in his life. He would have been rich in horses, but because he was not so solidly connected as he needed to be, that moment passed for him. And he said he was never rich in horses. Sometimes I had two or three or four, but that was the most I ever had, he said. And it was far less than the great herd that he saw within the cavern in the mountains. These are sacred stories. These are sacred times. We are sacred beings. We have forgotten where we came from. We forgot where we're headed. And what we will need in the future, we left it behind by the side of the path. And now it's important for us to begin to go back and to collect what we left behind that is going to be necessary for our young people to travel into the future in a healthy and powerful and sustainable way. And that requires an evolution, a transformation. This is a moment and a time of transformation for the earth and the transformations will be great. There will be many who will not uh, who will not see the entirety of their transformations because they have not been developed to the point where they can withstand those kind of things. And it's important now, connect to your soul. Your soul has a name. Let your mind know the name of your soul so that they can hold hands and travel together into the future. You know, we spend so much time trying to be anonymous and trying to trying to stay hidden in the shadows that uh, we lost who we were. Now it's time to remember. It is time to remember and to remember that we are visionaries. We are dreamers. We are lovers. We are people who appreciate the sacredness and the sanctity of life. And we give thanks every day to Creator for this blessing. And we always pray for our young people. May they find the pathway. May they be guided to teachers who will welcome them when they arrive because their arrival has been foretold by the spirits. The spirits say to me that there are spirit trails that emanate from many different parts of the world and that will end at my lodge. And they say that these spirit trails are going to be traveled in the future because people will require the teachings. They will require the guidance. They will require the assistance to become the complete entities 
they have the potential to become and they have the responsibility to become. So I say to young people, learn to listen. Listen with your heart. Listen with your mind. Listen with your body. And listen with your soul. And uh, in that way of listening, you will be guided to act on whatever level, maybe on many different levels at once. And, you know, when we receive those instructions, those are the things that we must do because it is important for us to evolve and to move along. We share this planet with many plants, with many animals. We share this planet with water, with fire, with stone, and with wind. All of these things that were created in the beginning, which would begin that journey through time. And in our interactions with these entities through time, they have uh, brought us great teachings. They have brought us ceremonies. They have brought us life and power, resilience. And we have been tested. We have been flung into the bottom, flung to the bottom to see if we could sus be sustained by our faith and our understanding. And, you know, we lost many people there. But there were the ones who could not surrender. Because it was not given to us to do that, but to stand up to the challenges that we would be faced with. Stand up to them. Welcome them. Why are we in this state? Why have we forgotten? What has drastically changed so much that we are so far away from, dare I say it, reality? The real world, well, there was, in the progression of human evolution, maybe seven or 8,000 years ago, there was a civilization that, uh, that developed and there was a lot of people. I mean, in order to keep track of things, they had to, they had to access writing systems and numeracy and uh, all of these other things in order to, in order to uh, have a sense of order. Again, there were some people who bought into that system, but there were others who gave it what it needed, but were not overpowered by it. And, uh, you know, there was, a, there was a story that was told of a man who refused to acknowledge this new system because it focused too much on uh, on uh, individuality and not not so much on on collective it was for individuals and didn't mind stating that and eventually he was imprisoned in a tower and was uh fed from time to time, but he would speak through a hole in the wall that they had created. And he would uh, tell his stories and he would sing his song. And he was imprisoned in there for a length of time. And uh, one day when he was talking through the wall to these people, whom he could not see and who could not see him, but he knew they were there and they were listening. And 
when he sang his power song, because we all have one, when he sang his power song at the end of his talk on that day, he heard an echo of a voice singing along with him. And he knew that his son had survived and that his son would carry on the ancient teachings. And he was happy that he had managed to pass the torch of understanding to another generation. And he was ready to go at that point. These are ancient stories. Talk about sacrifice. Talk about suffering. All that we've done in the name of the future. For the dream of a future. Today the dream lives. And it will begin to manifest itself much faster than we thought it would. because it is propelled by energy from a different dimension, which does not respond to the same laws of physics that we do. We have to be aware of. So these are things, you know, I hope they will help you to open your mind and to begin to think, to remember, to reflect, to dream, to understand that you are human and you are all of these things and it's important. You're not just someone who drives a fancy car or lives in a nice house or dresses in new clothes. That is definitely a part of you, but that is not truly who you are in your heart and in your mind and in your soul, and in your body. You are a child of creator, a child of loving compassion, forgiveness. Forgive yourself. Forgive each other. Learn about the process of reconnecting. You know, something so critical, something so critical, and we have such great technology that we could use to engender that reality. But we use it to stay separate, to keep, keep away from each other, to be anonymous, so that we don't have to accept responsibility. But those days are over. Those days are over. Now the helpers are at work on this earth. And one of the helpers is Iskoteo. Your grandfather fire is one of the helpers that is going to create the change. <clears throat> and, you know, if you honored it, things would go much better for humanity. If fire was honored and respected as a part of the ecosystem and allowed to play its role, things could be how they need to be. So, some things I hope and pray that our young people will listen to and our the spirits say that the young ones are ready to listen. And it is the young ones who should be offered this understanding, the ones who have yet to be brainwashed, I, I guess you could say into thinking that there is nothing here of any value. When all we have to do is just look around and look through the eyes of our spirits, our hearts, 
sit outside, listen to the songs of the birds. Sit outside. Let's sit by a tree. Those trees have incredible knowledge that they are constantly recycling. From the distant past into the distant future. And when we sit with them in silence, we may be able to gain aspects of understanding that will be critical for our own personal survival and the survival of the ones we love. The little ones, the ones not yet visible. Only in the mind are they visible, only in the dreams are they visible. But allow them to enter and approach a healthy world, a sacred world, because we learned about it and we treated it in that way. The time has come for humility. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's no longer about us and what we can achieve. I mean, we have gone great distances, but there are a great many more to go. We have not arrived. <laughs> yeah. That's the evolution and progression of the human species. Absolutely. Absolutely. Your mind will change, your body will change, your soul will grow and continue to develop. And you know what was once a spark, you can energize it to the point where it is an entity that is visible for millions of light years in space from a tiny spark. And the spirits say to me, when a human is born, when a human is born, has lived their life and has gone back to the spirit world, we who sit in the spiritual dimension, they say to me, we see a flash of light. Get right and grow them and disappear, and we know that a human being has lived, experienced their lives, and has passed on into another dimension. We are forever. We have always been. We will always be. So, some things to think about. The concept of time. And the principles you know, some people call them grandfathers. But the principles upon which our reality is grounded and can grow, you know, is the spirituality, the love, integrity, fearlessness, courage, all of these things that will allow us to view the world as it is, not, uh, not as we are afraid it might be. And feel comfortable with that. This is who I am. These trees are my relatives. These coyotes that sing at night, sing a song that is embedded in my memory. And I celebrate with them. It's important. Life is simple. It's how we actually choose to live it. Life, mm -hmm. you can be so very content by having a simple life and being at one and being at peace. It's not overly difficult to attain. It's just that it seems that everybody wants more, so much more. And mm -hmm. they may spend their whole life searching for it or trying to achieve it. And yet, life is, you know, the physical life here, in this dimension, certainly, is limited. 70, 80 years, 90? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, and in those 90 years, we there is such an incredible amount that we could do in terms of our own development. 
you know, if we had the vision, like what can we teach our children in schools that would reinforce what they are learning at home rather than, oh, this is not what I learn at home, you know, and creating those divisions and uh, different components to your life. Oh, right, this is uh, school, so I have to do things differently. This is work. This is recreation. You know, this is... And all of these different things that uh, we try to be. And we forget to relax and enjoy. And when we're so busy trying to conform to the status quo or what people think we should be doing or becoming or laughing or crying or feeling, all of these things, it takes a lot of energy to try to figure that out and then to play that role. When it's much more simpler to be rather than step into a role. So these are some things I think about. These are some things that are important to me, and the spirits have said to me that now is the time for these stories to be set free. Young people require these stories for guidance. And they are ready, they are seeking. Look for the ones who have the courage. Share what you can and help them on their journey. Would you so say we've become so bold that we have perhaps overstepped uh, the mark as far as to stay within boundaries? Or is progression part of certainly this life because we have been blessed with a brain, a mind that thinks, that speaks, that, that can communicate, and then from there come great, great ideas. But they're not all great, I have to say. Sometimes those ideas can be very, very destructive. And they also need, lead to an awareness of boundaries. You see, you have technologies, you have uh, situations, environments, uh, you know, where there are certain things that have to be taken into consideration. And uh, you learn about boundaries like that you know it's like uh, when my people went out onto the prairies and they lived in a teepee everybody there was not a bunch of different bedrooms uh, built into that teepee everybody slept in the same room the boundaries were built in the mind were taught in the mind it was not physical boundaries with doors that locked that uh, maintained peace and order in that environment, it was an understanding of people need their space. These are the types of behaviors that are required in these given relationships. And so you begin to learn your boundaries. What is healthy behavior? And what is behavior that would be considered unhealthy because it's destructive? Because it doesn't help maintain and develop harmony in the community or in our family. Yeah, there is so much to understanding the process because the process we are a part of is so vast. We only get little bits and glimpses of it. And sometimes we can be become quite oblivious to that as well because we're le leading such a hectic, busy lifestyle which has several goals in front and it's like that is the final destination uh, to get to that goal 
by hook or by crook, no matter what mm-hmm. come what what may come in the way. And uh, that actually, even though you know it's a goal, it can help make you lose focus about what's actually really important, and that's actually the essence of life and doing good and giving back to to people, love, affection, compassion, being humble, kind words, even the simple thing as smiling. Nowadays, it may be people may laugh at that. Oh, smiling, what are you talking about? But it's mm-hmm. one of the most basic things that you can do that can diffuse a very serious situation even. I've seen that happen. And just by being humble and just by saying, I'm sorry, it can change the destiny of of a relationship, can it not? And the possibilities and the potential become enormous when you are willing to expand your vision and your actions, you know, to encom- to not only to justify where you've been and what you have done, but also reflect. And if you have made mistakes, uh, you know, express uh, apologies for that to ones who have been hurt by your activities so that you can move ahead in a good way, in a better direction than where you have come from. Hmm. A lot of it is about understanding process and understanding boundaries, developing boundaries. In order to do that, you have to understand the process that you're a part of. And that process, I mean, you see a worm on the ground. You're a part of that process. You know, a bird will come along and pick that up and haul it away. That's part of your experience, you know. And why did you see that? Is there a story in there? Is there a teaching in there? And all of that stuff. It's the old saying, and I've said this many times on on my show, that everybody has a story to tell. You just have to be willing to listen. And Mm -hmm. stories are not just made-up stories. Stories are real. And they can really change somebody's life, sometimes just through stories or even poetry, which is in a very emotive and very expressive form. Um, It can change your outlook on life and it can give you that that perspective that you needed. It can give you the extra nudge, perhaps that nothing else can. And uh, that that's, but it just needs, again, it just needs us to listen. And when I say listen, not just physically, but even with our eyes, uh, for want of a better word, as an analogy, we need to listen with our eyes, we need to see, we need to perceive, we need to observe, we need to ponder, we need to reflect, and then we need to be grateful. Being alive in itself is a gift, immeasurable. There is never going to be enough thanks that we can utter in, our, in let's say, 90 years that will be sufficient <clears throat> to yeah. to say thank you or show gratitude for what we are as human beings, and everything that has been created around us for our purpose to exist. And, you know, like stories, poems, songs, it just reminded me of an image that I saw when I traveled to the desert. And it was, I traveled far away to a house upon an empty plain from where we stood and watched the comings and the goings on of all we knew. Was it a dream? I asked myself. Or is this simply just a sign of things to come? My side is aching from a fear that I can hide no more. The spirits that come calling me are waiting in eternity, another time, another place, but something else grabs onto me and brings me back to this reality. 
Is it a song? Is it a story? Is it a memory? Is it a dream? And whose dream? Whose memory? <laughs> but, yes. You know, things like that come. Images, mm. words. Yeah. And speak of things far away, outside of yourself, but they also speak of those very same things which are so far away within yourself. And those distances must become connected. Where's fine day? It's um, when you speak, it's very poetic. And I think that, or should I say, let me rephrase, I believe that this special episode will help people because they will give them that time to listen to your words and to actually then think and ponder and reflect. I am very grateful to you and I thank you profusely. So, Wes Fine Day, it's uh, been an absolute pleasure to have you on. And I will, of course, welcome you back very soon. And you know, one of the things in the future we can discuss is the sacred stories. The sacredness of sound, the power of sound, finding your voice, understanding who you are. You know, there there is a whole body of study within the circle of stories. So I want to maybe we'll touch on that at some point in the future. Absolutely. All right. I do hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of the Homeopathy Health Show. Please do support the show by clicking follow on my socials. Remember, the more exposure the podcast receives, the better for homeopathy around the world. You can find me on Instagram by searching for at like underscore treats like and on both Facebook and TikTok by searching for at like treats like. So let's promote the voice of homeopathy on radio and podcast around the world together. Don't forget to visit me online at www.liketreatslike.co.uk and click on the radio and podcast tab. Here you'll be able to see all the guests that have joined me on the show so far. And of course, you can stream on demand the latest episode to your mobile, tablet or PC. Until next time, stay safe and take care. <laughs>